So yeah. now we will welcome in Justin Kosick, the head coach of the Springfield girls soccer team, as we venture from volleyball tournaments to soccer tournaments, and it is in the full swing of tournaments as well. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me again, you guys. I appreciate it. Man, we, we haven't talked to you since uh, the, the season preview, really. I mean, uh, before we get into the tournaments and the brackets and breaking down these matchups, just give us a kind of a reflection of how you think the season went compared to maybe the expectations you had preseason when you talked to us last. Um, we had We had big expectations. Um, it didn't go exactly how we wanted it to, but we ended up winning the MVAC again for the second year in a row. Um, we finished 12, two and two overall with a loss to Salem, who phenomenal division two team this year. Uh, we lost to champion the first time we played them, put a lot of shots on goal. We just couldn't put it in. They beat us three to one that game. And then other than those two games, I mean, we had a tie against United. We had a tie against, uh, Waterloo early in the season, who is a much improved offensive team. And we, we kind of got done what needed to get done. Uh, we had a lot of big injuries this year. We lost our two four-year starting senior inside defenders early in the season. Uh, Kylie Medvek went down before halftime of our first game with a knee injury. Mary Grace Mason went down before halftime of, I think, our third game with, our, with a knee injury. Mary Grace tried to come back, and uh, we put her in. Uh, for maybe two minutes and she planted that foot and the knee just gave out and buckled again and, and finding people to replace the two of them. We have, we have two freshmen, um, Hannah Stouffer and Kendall Mon are back there playing for us in those positions. And, and they've done a phenomenal job. Just, I mean, more than I ever could have asked for, for freshmen coming in, replacing two seniors like that. And, and the team kind of rallied around them and, like I said, we didn't necessarily do exactly what we thought we would do, but we've we've stepped up enough and, and we've moved some girls around in every game. They've been willing to play multiple positions, uh, not just game to game, but I, I mean half to half, minute to minute. I, I've moved girls to four to five different positions in one game, multiple girls in one game, just to fill spots that needed filled based on injuries and we've had some illnesses and they've stepped up and, and they've done what they needed to do. It's, it's been exciting that way. I've, I've coached more this year than I think I've coached in the last four years combined. You talk about a lot of these freshmen stepping up and I'm sure that there was a lot of surprises in, in that too. Talk to me a little bit about how much growth you've seen from the freshmen and where the biggest areas of growth there has been from game one until now. We have uh, our three seat our three freshmen who, get the most playing time for us. Uh, Hannah Stouffer and, and Kendall Mon, like I said, they've been starting every game at, at defense. They started outside. They moved inside. Uh, the three, the two of them, their confidence has just grown leaps and bounds. Uh, Hannah is a club kid. She plays at SVA. Kendall is, is not. She played rec through our rec league and she played uh, maybe two years of travel with us. And she looks like a club kid out there. She, she comes out and it's kind of like we have one who just – brutes everybody and, and runs the ball down and gets it out of there for us. And then we have one with a little bit more skill and, and helps her out. But anything that gets by Hannah, Kendall seems to run down for us. And the big thing with the two of them, like I said, is their confidence. They're playing so confident and so well together right now. They trust each other. The rest of the team trusts them. So that's huge back there. Our third one is Sammy Schaefer. She is our, um, uh, I mean, we've moved her everywhere. She goes to SVA with Hannah. Um, she started off as a forward. We moved her to outside mid. Um, we have seemed to settle her as an inside mid, kind of an attacking or a holding player there. And it's the same thing. Like once we found a spot that, that she can stay in for the most part, again, we've had a lot of injuries, so we've moved her when we needed to. But that seems to be her comfort zone, so she likes it in there. And once she got three or four games in a row in, inside, she really started to just excel. And I think the big thing with her, again, confidence. Um, teammates trusting her, her trusting her teammates, understanding the game plans and, and just playing with a lot of confidence. Coach, once one, congratulations on winning the MVAC for the second straight year going back to back. This league really pushed you guys this year. I mean, Waterloo comes in a much improved team. They tied you the first time. It was a one point game. The second time, a lot of good teams in this conference. How much do you think it helped you prepare for what you're going to see in this tournament bracket? I think it's huge. Um, last year was our first year in the league. Um, 
and, and I talked to a lot of coaches last year about just hoping that overall the league improved and it has, uh, the other coaches have done a great job. I would put our schedule and I I've talked to United's coach. I've talked to Crestview's coach multiple times about this. I, I think that, and United is not in our league, but they play a lot of the same teams. I would put our schedule up there against anybody. I mean, I know South range plays only D two schools, but looking at the schools that they play compared to us playing Crestview twice, champion twice, Waterloo twice, we had United out of conference and Ursuline out of conference. And we played Salem out of conference and um, the Niles game. We didn't quite get to finish till halftime. We stopped with 32 seconds left, but they're in South Rangers conference in a, in a D two. And we tied them with 32 seconds left in the first half. So I think that the league improving and, and I didn't even mention Waterloo like you did. Uh, they kind of came out of nowhere this year. Um, he has done, Chris Hart has done a phenomenal job with that team. Kara English is going to be the real deal. I mean, she's really good as it is as a sophomore, but by the time she's a senior, everybody in this area, D one, two, and three is going to have to watch out for her because she's a really strong player. And offensively, that team has improved probably more than any team I've seen in my eight years of doing this. So I, I think that the conference improving, I don't think it will just help us. I mean, like I said, Crestview and Waterloo being ready to play in these brackets, um, it's really going to benefit us being game ready for tournaments. And talking about being game ready. And I mean, I think the adversity that you guys face is definitely going to help you out come this tournament time. What are some though other improvements that you're looking to kind of make, or are there any adjustments if at all that you do want to make uh, before the start of the tournament? There are, I mean, we still have a couple little nicks and dings and, and I've given more days off this year. Of, of practice and rest time than I've probably given again in the last four or five years combined. Um, we, we've had a lot of rest days just trying to get healthy and it started all click probably about two or three weeks ago with the rest and, and people starting to play, but we still have some, some nicks and dings that, that need to be taken care of um, before Thursday and, and definitely before Monday, if we're lucky enough to keep playing after this Thursday. But, I mean, improvement-wise, we always talk about just stringing our passes together, getting into open spaces and connecting. Um, it, it's hard with, with high school kids, boys or girls. You get a couple players on your team that are really good, and somebody plays them the ball, and everybody just kind of wants to stop and watch them. And we're trying to work through that where we don't want to get Brianna the ball or Gracie the ball or Kayla the ball and just everybody else kind of watch to see, oh, wow, look what she did. Make the run with them. Go help them. Go support them. Get in a spot where they can see you. Even if you don't get it, you're pulling a defender away from her. So, so we're still working on a lot of movement um, off the ball and just getting in position for the person that's on the ball. And as you try to make those improvements before tomorrow where your tournament kicks off, let's look at this bracket and kind of look at where you sit. You're the four seed in the, you know, the, the super district, I guess we could call it, uh, and you will play Brookfield on Thursday. And then, you know, you'll look at this, the the – if, if chalk plays out, Berkshire is the two seed up to up at the top of the bracket. You're the four seed, but Waterloo's in this bracket as well. You know, they'll be heard from you got a Badger team that, that is always a strong program. Uh, Rootstown is in there as the sixth seed, a lot of good teams in this bracket. Uh, I think people kind of naturally turn their eyes to the one seed, but this bracket uh, with the two and the four should be a really competitive district. Yeah, we have, uh, again, talking to a lot of the other coaches in, in the the super bracket, I guess, super district, as you would call it, from both brackets. Really, if you looked at both brackets for of the Akron district, the, the first two or three rounds, it was a crapshoot. I mean, you could have a, a, a three seed and a 12 seed, and the 12 seed would win. I don't even know if you could call it an upset just because of the way the bracket was laid out and, and the way that the voting went. Um to me, when we voted, Berkshire was the number one team. Uh, South Range ended up getting it, which, fair enough. Um, but one or two there. And then I thought after that, there were eight or nine schools that were just kind of clumped together, us included. And, and it was really hard to, to decipher who you were going to put in what order. And the way that it played out, I mean, it, it, you could have went one and two or two and one, however you wanted to. And then three through 12 – you could have completely flipped the bracket and I don't think anybody really would have been upset just because it was such a cluster of teams that were, were equal. So, I mean, we didn't do well in my early years in, in the tournament, but 
over the last five or six years, we've competed pretty well. I've never seen a bracket like this. Um, I, I obviously would like to root for the local teams, but at the same time, when you get in tournaments, I always find it fun to play with schools that you haven't played yet. So having to play Brookfield a third time, the possibility of playing Waterloo a third time. Um, not that it's frustrating. It's just for the kid's sake, it's, it's more fun. I think when you play teams that you haven't seen yet. Um, I know that when we were always a lower seed early in my career, we, I, I always chose to go to far travel places just to give them that tournament experience. So, I mean, it is what it is. The, the bracket's kind of loaded, and, and whoever wins, you're going to play. Uh, we went and watched Columbia and Brookfield the other night. Brookfield played a fairly strong game. Um, we've played them twice. They, they've they played us very strong twice. The first game, we beat them 3-2. to two. I, I, I think we got lucky to win the game. Uh, the second time, they were up 2 nothing at halftime. And, and then we kind of got clicking in the second half. I think it was either five to three or five to two final, but they have played us for a team that only has three or four wins. They have played us very strong both times that we played them. So, I mean, we just got to show up, play our game. And, and like I said, we move people all around. So our game might change 10 minutes into the game and we just make adjustments and, and we're just ready and we go from there. Yeah, and I mean, talking about that too, and facing a team a third time, you know, that it's obvious that, you know, sometimes you got to make those adjustments so you don't come out with that uh, that same game plan. Uh, looking though uh, uh, ahead, or rather looking back at what you've been able to accomplish this season and what you talked about uh, coaching a lot more this season and being a lot more involved. So I, I you, you've already hinted that this has been a very unique experience for you and one that you uh, you haven't had to do in quite some time. What has been your favorite part, though, of, of coaching this particular team this season? I didn't really know how this was going to go this year with, with Kylie graduating last year and going off to college. And and it's it's been tough. Um, my son's playing freshman football, JV football, and varsity football. So trying to get to all of those games, trying to get to see Kylie play a couple times here and there. Um, I wasn't sure how this would go. The relationship that I have with the girls on this team is different than any relationship I've had with the girls on any team that I've coached before. Um, I think when you interviewed my captains earlier in the year, I think Kylie Medvek actually made the comment about being able to joke around at practice and have fun. And I think that we have more fun and, and that we do joke around and, and laugh a lot more than any of the other teams that I've had. Uh, there was always a real serious edge to, to the team. And, and, and a lot of that last year was we, we were trying to finish an undefeated season. And, and this year, even before we lost a game, we weren't really concerned about that. We were just out and, and trying to make things happen as we went from game to game. But the, just the relationships and, and the, the seniors that are able to be a big part of that and, and include the freshmen and the sophomores in pretty much everything that we do. I mean, we just, they came over, the whole team came over last weekend. We did pumpkin carving and just the, the screwing around and, and making fun of each other and joking around during that. It just, it kind of gets your mind off of soccer and allows you to focus on soccer when you need to without being so much wrapped into it. Um, I think that that's by far my favorite part of what this, this group has brought this year. And what might be the most important question of this interview, we have to know if Bo Snyder did a very good job getting you guys a student section because we were told in that preview with, with your captains that, that he was in charge of it. And we, we were very adamant that we were going to keep on him. So you have to give us a progress report on Springfield student section. Did Bo Snyder do a good enough job getting you guys support? I will say that when, when Coach Guerrero has allowed them out of practice early enough for our 5 o'clock starts, at least for the second half of them, we have had a very good turnout from the football boys to our games. Um, I've all, all, I mean, I'll say it. We've even had talking to some parents and looking around at the stands the last three or four away games we've had, and we travel far. Like Our, our travel is 45 minutes to an hour to most of our away games, except for Crestview. Uh, we've had a lot more people in our away stands than the home team has. So fans, parents, grandma, grandparents, aunts and uncles, football boys, um, volleyball players have been coming to watch. I give the whole, the whole community a lot of credit. They're coming out and watching girl soccer. 
and talking about the community giving you support. Uh, talk about how much the community is going to need to get out there and support you in this third matchup versus Brookfield now. Yeah, uh, we we generally get a decent crowd for tournament games, which which has been nice the last few years. But like like you said, Ty, it's playing a team the third time. I don't care if you've won twelve to one and ten to two. It, it you're playing a team the third time. They kind of know what you do. So trying to mix it up without changing who you are is, is tough. Um, we have a lot of support coming out from our local rec league community. Uh, a lot of the younger girls in our in our district come out and and they they drag their parents with them <laughs> and and they get to come out and, and watch us play a lot. Um, we've done some things this year where we've actually brought back a lot of our our soccer alumni and former coaches. And I, I get texts and, and messages on Facebook constantly from them about good luck and and they're going to try to make it to the tournament games and all that stuff. So I'm hoping we can, at least for a soccer game, fairly full, fill up that stadium on, on Thursday. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It was great to hear from you uh, and, and reflect on the season and get a, a preview of this really strong Division Three bracket that you are in. Good luck uh, Thursday night and the rest of the tournament. We hope you make a deep tournament run, and who knows? Maybe we'll bring you back on to talk about a district championship. That would be fantastic, Anthony. <laughs> we'll be hoping to talk to you again real soon, Coach. Good luck on everything. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one.